Welcome back, my friends. You didn't know you were going to get sung to today, did you? All right, today I am going to evaluate how well my cluster-adjusted scatter plots work. And if you didn't see the last video, let me explain it again. But I'm going to use the old me to explain it. So for this graphic, we're just going to look at one cluster. And so this is a cluster that has 10 different data points. And then that line is the cluster specific regression line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do like we normally do when we residualize things. We're going to compute the residuals and identify each observation's deviation from their respective cluster line. And then what we will do is we will take the fixed effect indicated in white here. And we're going to assume now that that individual has the same deviation, but instead of from the cluster regression line, we're going to assume that their deviation now falls from the fixed regression line, like this. But instead of doing that with just one cluster, we could do it with all the clusters and plot them all on the same graph, like this. And because you have subtracted out the cluster level effects, you now have independent data points, so there's nothing wrong with doing this sort of a plot. And then when you do this, it's going to be much easier to tell if there's curvilinearity problems, which there is in this plot. The basic idea is that within a cluster, if you only have like five to 10 data points, there's it's going to be really hard to pick up nonlinearity because there's not enough data points to establish a strong pattern yet. But if we can borrow information from all the other clusters, then it seems to me that that sort of a pattern will emerge. Wow, really well said. Couldn't have said it better myself. This is all part of the FlexPlot package as of the release of this video, so you can use it yourself. Download it on GitHub. Instructions are in the description. So I'm gonna use a data set called evals, which came from an R package. Okay, this is from the modern dive package. And this is data from 94 professors, and professors taught multiple courses. And so I just saved the data set locally uh, I did a screenshot of the uh, documentation before. And so we've got prof ID score, which is the professor's evaluation score. Scores near one are very unsatisfactory. Scores near five are very excellent. Age of the professor, beauty rating of the professor, gender of the professor, ethnicity, language, rank, whether they are a teaching professor, a tenure track, or a tenured faculty member, uh, pick outfit, whether the outfit of the professor in the picture is formal or not, and then the color of the outfit. So this is a real data set, apparently. And what I want to show you is just how you can use these cluster adjusted scatter plots to try to make decisions about building models that might not have been so clear previously. So the first model I'm going to fit, I just started going through variables one at a time at first. So I'm going to look at, well, actually, I'll just start out by showing you how it works. So there's two ways that you could visualize these mixed models. The first is by first fitting a model, like in this case. So I'm fitting a model where I'm predicting score from the age of the professor with a random intercept. And then now I specify how it's plotted using a flex plot formula right there. And then I say object equals mod. So I feed it the model that I just fit, and then it will give you a plot that looks like this, where you've got the cluster adjusted scatter plot. And it seems that as the age of the professor increases, the score goes down. Age is a man, it's real. So that's one way you could do it. Another way, um, and I modified how this worked because I got sick of having to write so much code to fit a model and then to visualize it that I just kind of streamlined it a little bit. And so this would take three arguments, a formula, a data set, and then how the random component is specified. And then it's basically going to assume that whatever you put here, that's what the fixed effects look like. And so if I do that, not surprisingly, we get the exact same plot as it should be because those are gonna be using the same model because in the background, it's just fitting that model. So now let's look at beauty. Does the attractiveness of the professor influence 
their ratings. I'm doing it this way. And I also decided to add a geom smooth or a lowest line just to see if there's any sort of non-linearity going on. And this is what we get. I was really puzzled. I would have thought that the attractiveness of the professor would influence the ratings, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Or at least it's inconsistent. Um, so you can see my comment there like, what? Beauty doesn't make a difference? But maybe it interacts with gender and it's kind of hard to tell from these lowest lines that even though I did span equals 0.95, let me do 0.99 and see if that makes things better. And not really. So the problem with this is that these visuals are not gonna work correctly. I, th I don't think these visuals are gonna work correctly if your model is wrong, which is unfortunate because when you're using like regular Flexplot for regular models, you don't have to know the model to be able to visualize how the data are behaving, but I think you do here. And so I said, okay, maybe there is a beauty effect, but there's an interaction going on, so you don't actually see it. And so we need to model that interaction and then do our adjustment and then see if it shows up. And so let's go ahead and look at beauty by gender, because of course gender's got to make a difference, right? Aren't females held to a higher standard as far as their attractiveness? And with men, it doesn't matter as much. I don't know. I think I've seen research that says that. So that's what I would expect, but it's kind of hard to tell. And I see these lowest lines are kind of bending at the beginning, and I don't know why that is. And so one thing I realized as I was doing this is that um, these cluster adjusted scatter plots, they're a little problematic if you don't got the model right, because these adjustments are happening after you fit the model. And so if the model isn't correct, the adjustments aren't gonna be correct. And so I started to wonder, okay, maybe if we fit an interaction between beauty and gender, that we will then start to see some sort of a pattern emerge. And so I fit that. And then lo and behold, we do have evidence of an interaction. Now, if we go back to the old plot, that just goes to show that, so even though the lowest lines are allowed to bend with the data, we see much more prominent lowest lines in the second plot because again, the effectiveness of these plots are dependent on the model, which is unfortunate. I wish they weren't, but that's how it goes. So they are dependent on the model. And when we get a model that presumably seems a little closer to reality, that we then start to see maybe there's a potential interaction going on there. And also like, really? That was uh, surprising that it seems to me that the beauty, the influence of beauty on a professor's rating there's a stronger relationship for the men than the women. That seems backwards from what I would expect. So I do wonder if the uh, labels were flipped. Actually, you know what we could do? We could do... Okay, took me a bit of time to figure out uh, how to count the number of professors. So we have 40 female and 54 male which is actually what I would expect. There tend to be more male professors than female professors. So anyway, I'm looking at that just to see if there is a potential swap between males and females. So it seems that the data are correct. I don't, again, that kind of deviates from what I expected that I thought that women would be, would have a stronger association between their attractiveness and their score, but apparently not. So look how progressive we have all become, yay. And also, I was surprised that beauty didn't make as much of a difference as it did. Having a psychology background, there's something called the halo effect, that uh, a salient trait, such as attractiveness, people tend to assume higher abilities in a bunch of other areas, including teaching abilities. So I would have expected that, but apparently not. And so because I thought there would be a stronger relationship between beauty and score, I thought maybe there's another variable lurking there. Because again, what worries me is that the visuals are model dependent. I'm just trying to find any other possible like fixed effects that I can model that might explain why I don't see a stronger relationship. So I added age in there because of course, like you got young college students, people tend to be attracted to people their age. And so I would assume that 
Um, maybe that sort of halo effect might be happening for professors that are closer to their age. So I looked at the data and it actually didn't seem to matter. In fact, what surprises me is the attractiveness of the professor doesn't change with age, or does it? Oh, I'm looking at... Actually, that would be an interesting model to look at. Let's go... And then now I can just use regular flexplot, bty underscore avg, underscore avg tilde age, data equals k. Okay. I mean, there certainly is a relationship between them. But what's interesting is that it doesn't seem to affect their scoring. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, that model's not going to make sense at all. All right. Anyway, continuing on. Let's see if age has an influence or can we get rid of it? Because in the earlier plots that looked like this, if we look at that again, it doesn't seem like the relationship between BTY, between beauty and their score changes depending on their age. Or no, I'm looking at that the wrong way. Um, what I should be doing is looking at age on the x-axis so I can leave that as is but I'll put age there and then bty underscore avg and then let's see if there's a relationship between the two okay so there is a slight decrease but we look at smooth equals true oh actually that's not gonna because I was thinking okay I want to see if there's any bendingness to the data but we wouldn't be able to tell unless we add a polynomial so let me try that plus i times age squared plus so that's the model and then now let's see if there's a relationship there and no even though we explicitly add a polynomial that doesn't seem to be anything so there maybe there's a slight negative relationship between age and the rating that older professors tend to get rated more poorly but let's go ahead and do a model comparison with age versus without age. Let's look at it. And AIC is favoring the reduced. So is BIC. So is the Bayes factor. So is the p-value. So yeah, it looks like age isn't all that important. We can get rid of age. Now, um, I am interested to know whether that interaction, we can get rid of it. Now, we already saw a plot. And I'll go ahead and show that again. So we saw a plot that looks like this. So is that big enough to keep? Looks like it might be close, but let's go ahead and do the full and reduced model comparison. So AIC is favoring the reduced, so is BIC, so is base factor, so is p-value. Okay. So my eyes did deceive me. That's unfortunate. But what is cool about that is that I spent, you know, a couple hours in R doing what I do with regular models, except these were mixed models. Normally when I do mixed models, I don't rely on visualizations because the visualizations haven't been very good. And so instead I rely on model comparisons, but now I can rely more heavily on visuals in ways that I've always wanted to, except there's still that limitation that the effectiveness is very model dependent, unfortunately. And so I don't know if there's a way that I can address that. I mean, this is this is a limitation of these plots. So is there a way to make it just work? And I don't know. I don't know, but it's something I'll be thinking about. Anyway, I hope that's been informative. As I said, I'll leave links in the description if you want to start using the cluster adjusted scatter plot for your own benefit. And also, I've got classes, you know that? Simplistics.net, check it out. I've got mixed models classes. I don't know when my next live one is coming up. It'll probably not be until 2026, February maybe. Uh, but I have other live classes going on and you could always take the self-guided mixed models class or any other class. See the links in the description. Anyway, I hope you have had as much fun as I've had.
I'll see you next time. Peace out. My hair is getting long. I look like a bit of a... Like I got bat wings or something. Let's see. Woo! Thank you. Hi, compliments. Yeah, that's like a big problem I don't know how to tackle. You want to know the best approach to analyzing data like that? Don't ever do it. It's not high key, it's low key. Does that make me Thor? You ain't making up data there. Mm. Some people exist and some people don't exist. <sighs> it's a bit late to be doing this, isn't it? You know what? I just don't feel like being clever. I don't know. Mm. Goodbye.